How's it going, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. This is video number two about my trip to the 2023 Pyramid Air Cup in Ohio. This is my first air gun event ever. I had a great time as well. By the time I left there, I was totally on fire for the sport again, and I'm definitely going to be going back next year. For a lot of the time, I was just walking around looking at people's guns, and I had actually missed the first day, which is Gunslinger. So people have different types of guns for all the competitions. I showed up on the second day, which was bench rest. So there's some bench rest guns in here, but if you want to see the really good stuff, the good stuff comes out when it's field target time. So field target is when everyone walks into the woods and they do three rounds over two days through a course that has like maybe 26 lanes on it, something like that. And they're shooting down field targets at different distances. And boy, those guns are just off the hook. So next year, I'm just gonna post up right at the entrance there and we're gonna get some crazy ones. But I do have a few field targets. But mostly this is extreme bench rest, field targets, and we missed the gunslinger, which uh, I guess one of the winners had some crazy stuff going on. So like a magazine he invented just for that event. Um, so next year we'll get that. All right, welcome to the gun show. This guy had a tattoo and a gun that perfectly matched. And he was one of the extreme bench rest winners. There's 14 people that make it all the way to the end and get prize money. You can see this guy's rocking a Tim Swan harmonic tuner. Pretty much everybody had the harmonic tuners on there. I didn't really know what was going on. Like, I don't know who's, you know, the favorite to win and stuff. But obviously, Steve at AEAC does know all that stuff. And so out there, this is way before extreme bench rest. He was out there interviewing the future winner probably because he knew he was going to win. But I do have my own footage of the Sabre Tactical team about five minutes before they went on to win first place with the Red Panda. So let's just check that out real fast. All right, you guys, I'm posted up here with Sabre Tactical team. What team are you guys, Sabre Tactical? Tactical! Okay, that'll work. <laughs> Yeah, get some fried rice tonight. Oh, I get it. Tactical. Jesus Christ. Panda. Sweet and sour. Sweet and sour. That's dope. There's some rollings in there. So when I was standing over there, I looked down and saw this super awesome tank holder. And I was like, who the heck made that? You know, joking. Thane Simmons was right there and he said, oh, I made that. So Thane Simmons is actually, him and his dad are the genius behind Sabre Tactical. And Sabre Tactical is developing this new gun along with Donny FL and the Pellet Shop. And I think it's called the Red Panda, and it should be out around Christmas time. That right there is PJ Clark. So the whole Sabre Tactical team was using the Red Panda, and Thane won the 100-yard bench rest competition with a 30 caliber Red Panda. So obviously they're not messing around. This girl right here, her name is Kayla, and she's gonna be on the new season of American Air Gunner. I didn't get a chance to talk to her, but she did beat out like over 100 guys to take a spot as one of the winners in the 100 yard bench rest competition. She was using an FX M3. Real quick, if you didn't see the first Pyramid Air Cup video, there was a lot of scouts there. As well, Scout had a booth and they had some of their fancy finishes that they can put on their guns. Tim Swan had a blue one, all tricked out. And this right here is actually a finish called Starfield. So I'm pretty sure you can request that and have them put that on your Scout. Definitely watch my scout review if you haven't seen it. I work super hard to get every detail of the gun into the video. As well, when you see the accuracy of these guns, you'll realize that the FX M3 now has some real competition. Now here's just a bunch of random guns that people were shooting for the 100 yard bench rest. The first day is three qualifying rounds, I believe. So the first day you qualify, and the second day there's a certain number of shooters with I believe 14 winners at the end. A lot of times the gun, although they're top quality guns, the gun itself would be the cheapest thing out of the whole setup. These guys were rocking super nice scopes, and most of these guns had all kinds of things hanging off them, like we're talking $600 bipods, who knows, maybe more than that. You know, $1,000 bench rest contraptions, and a lot of different guys would add weight to their guns. So some really high tech stuff. And like I said, everybody had something going on to enhance their gun. Whether it's a harmonic tuner or special weights or an expensive bipod, you can see that guy right there is rocking a Black Arts barrel band. And I'm guessing that those things on the sides are weights. 
and he's slinging lead with the reliable M3. A lot of the time, I would say most of the time, you would have to look pretty hard to figure out what kind of gun these guys were shooting just because they had it so modified and customized. The thing that I thought was even cooler is the guys that showed up with just stock guns or, you know, like a Gauntlet 2. This one guy had a Benjamin Gunner. Another guy brought a Benjamin Marauder that he had built entirely from free parts that people gave him. Although he did have another gun for field target that was more serious. We had a caliber gun. And that's what I always thought would be cool. Try to show up to one of those and like win the competition with an Avenger. That would be legendary. The name of this gun is escaping me right now, but it's either a Taipan or a Cricket. And this guy, I think, is shooting an FX Boss, which all you have seen my FX Boss FT version. Definitely a gun that belongs in competition. This right here is a blue FX Crown, which I used to own this exact same gun in 25 caliber, but I sold it before I could make a video. And this right here is a Star LG 110 High Power, which I do own this exact same gun. It's probably the last air gun I would ever sell next to my Boss FX FT. And of course there was a nice assortment of Thomas air rifles there. Thomas air rifles are basically what win world competitions right now. They're about $5,000. I talked to the guy Thomas one time and he said they come with a die so you make your own slugs. So you make your own slugs that go with the gun. Pretty awesome. Although in bench rest competition you have to shoot pellets. And we're almost to the part where I'm going to show you some field target guns. But first, here's my two favorite, well, let's just make it three. My top three favorite guns of the Pyramid Air Cup bench rest competition. First number three was the Red Panda. Ben from the pellet shop told me a little bit about it. It's crazy technology. Basically, there's four different air chambers. Maybe five, I'm not sure. But the results speak for themselves. So really looking forward to getting that. Number two is the American Flag M3 shot by this guy. So he's a shooter on one of my favorite YouTube channels, which I don't actually watch because I only shoot paper, but I do know that these guys are serious shooters and that they're very nice, as long as you're not a woodchuck. And I definitely think this gun would have been number one if it wasn't for the one that you're about to see. And my pick for the number one coolest gun belonged to Ken Hicks, who's the guy that runs Spa Weapons. If I had to guess, I'd say a Panthera. This gun right here has a lot going on. It's a Panthera and the front bottle has been added. You got what looks like sort of chrome plated quad rail type things. And then that fades into a silver anodized aluminum stuff right there. Finally, he's rocking the Yokozuma Don FL. Just beautiful. And I'm sure the performance is pretty awesome too. Right here is, I think, one of the qualifying days. But aside from when they're actually shooting, it's really informal. You know, anyone can walk up there. So I walked up there, I was talking to Rick, and everybody's looking at their targets. It's a lot of fun. You know, no one knew who I was because I don't really show my face on this channel. Everybody's just super friendly, though, and, and super nice. And they're happy to tell you about their guns or any question you got. And believe me, I was asking questions. It's a really good time for any level of air gun shooter, whether you're beginning or you consider yourself an expert. So the next two days were field target competition. And they had a whole course set up in the middle of the woods. So right here, everyone's getting ready for that. Again, I'm not sure how many lanes there are, but each lane might have one or two targets. And you may have to shoot it a couple times. Then there's a person there that keeps score. And at the end of two days, I believe you get one point and there's 60 shots. That's how it works, yes. One guy actually did get a perfect score, so he didn't miss one the entire time. So there were some targets that would be close up, some targets that would be far away. Some lanes may have a far away one and a close one. And there was targets with big holes and tiny little half inch holes, all different shapes and sizes. Any of you who aren't familiar, you have to get your pellet through that hole in the target and then behind it is a paddle and only by hitting that panel inside the hole will the target knock down and then you just yank it back up with that string one of my favorite guns that i didn't realize how nice looking they are until i saw it in person was the katran with a wooden stock i believe this kid was from the utah air guns crew they did all have matching shirts 
obviously those guys don't miss very often. This guy, I believe, had a TX200. And as you can see, it's obviously designed for field target. That model right there has been winning field target for decades. This lady was using like an off-the-shelf bullpup. And I don't remember exactly what kind. It was like a Vulcan or a Taipan or something like that. I saw it sitting on the truck. She was icing targets. For field target, I don't think you need a $3,000 gun. I saw a lot of people with just off-the-shelf day states. I would say any off-the-shelf day state is perfect for this event. That guy right there is probably shooting an FX Royale, which is their dedicated 25. I believe this is going to be the Walther LG 400, which in the Olympics, they use this gun and the Steyr pretty much exclusively, if I got that right. This guy has a Red Wolf, which is supposed to be the most accurate gun in the world, in a PRS stock, a precision rifle shooting stock. So you can buy that stock and slap it on your Red Wolf, I believe. Speaking of Red Wolves, this Red Wolf right here belonged to one of my viewers that I had actually been chatting it up with through the comment section on YouTube for quite a while. So it was cool to meet him and a lot of other people that watch the channel. This guy right here is shooting a Thomas Air Gun, which I dream of owning one day. Speaking of Thomas Air Guns, I would probably want one that was set up pretty much like this, that was shooting slugs on high power. This particular Thomas got photobombed by its owner. And here's another TX200. Check out how that butt pad is fused into the stock. Just looks like a work of art. If I had a gun like this, it would have its own display case at my house. That belongs in a museum! And now here's a look at the gun that I was most hoping to see by coming to the Pyramid Air Cup. This is the Air Arms XTI-50. And I actually heard about this gun a few years ago. Basically, they're special order from Pyramid Air, and they're $4,000. There's only two in the U.S. right now, and fortunately, the owner was shooting field target at the Pyramid Air Cup, and he gave me a full tour of his Air Arms XTI-50. This gun's specifically designed for field target, obviously, and it's 12 foot-pounds. So the XTI-50 project was built around two words, no compromise. And there's extensive use of titanium throughout the entire rifle. Check that out. This is the hamster, and it's got like 100 moving parts. So yeah, uh, tell me about 100. it. Wow. This, this thing's running on ball bearings on both sides, so this is a roller bearing inside here. Wow. And even this little piece here, when you push this button, it pushes a rod up through here that runs on bearings. Wow. And rotates a cam and pulls these locking pins out. Wow. And if you want to lock it in place, you spin these in, and that runs into these little holes in the side so you can lock it so when you push the button it, it won't move that one. Oh man that's sweet and then it folds all the way up in the stock that is so crazy look at that so you can oh, easily man. with one hand move it anywhere you want that is awesome and it's hollow out so this so it's not very heavy wow this whole gun is 10.4 pounds without the scope wow nice way, way lighter than the one I was shooting before boy the ultimate field target right there of course the uh comes with an adjustable uh, butt and two piece and adjust any way you want. Wow. Everything's on the fly adjustment, everything's just smooth. Field target definitely looks like a lot of fun to compete in. It would be great to have that skill where you could shoot a rifle accurately in a standing position, a sitting position. It would definitely be a cool discipline. And now here's a quick look at the vendor area. It was pretty cool. You could sit down at like the Air Force booth or the Umarex booth, Crossman Benjamin and shoot all their guns. It was basically, the vendor area was in a place where each company had their own shooting bay, basically. And they had Firebird targets. You could reach in a five gallon bucket, as many as you could carry, you could have for oh, free. Oh man, that's pretty smooth. Yeah. And that didn't even really kick. So we were blowing those up all day. Things got crazy. Yeah. But yeah, definitely a super good time. So it's not that much to travel to the Pyramid Air Cup. I came from all the way on the West Coast. And if you get your stuff through Expedia, you can bundle your car, hotel, and airfare all into one. And I'll tell you, it was like the price of a FX Dreamlight. And I was there, had a great time for four days. I would have to say the booth with the most badass guns would have to be the Air Force booth. Because they had all their Air Force guns as well as the RAW lineup. That guy right there was blowing up Firebirds with a RAW chassis gun. <laughs> I had a great time getting handfuls of Firebird targets. 
Oh. Yeah, now we're cooking. And then running back and forth to different booths. Oh, that was a flasher. When they called cold range, I'd run out there and stick a bunch on. Wow. <laughs> Blown those things up just never gets old. Oh man, you're a good shooter, dude. This guy does not miss. You guys, I'm at the Air Venturi booth right here. And I was sitting right there. And I just, with the Avenger X, I gotta show you. We just tried to get everyone shooting, so. This lower group is not mine. But this top group. And this is shooting from a super wobbly rest. This is a top group. There, one guy shot, there was a hole there of one pellet. And I used that for my bullseye and I shot that six right there. So, from a wobbly rest. So that thing is a tack driver, I'm telling you. Wait till I get my cold stinger and I throw my video. It's a super stable rest. I think it's gonna be very impressive. So this guy, I'm not sure his name, but I recognize him as the Air Force guy. He just picked up one of those Air Force Texans, which fires this huge hollow point slug, and he was just freehanding it. Blasting those AR-500 paddles back and forth from the shoulder, it was pretty cool. In the extreme bench rest, he was shooting a raw chassis gun. At the end of the third day, they had the extreme bench rest awards banquet. So they had some good food, but as well, they were giving away a bunch of prizes for the raffle. So all you had to do was buy a raffle ticket and some people walked away with some awesome packages. This guy probably won, I'd say the best package. He got the only Avenge X in the country, as well as a scope. So much stuff that he couldn't even carry it back to his table. Party this guy was super cool. I had actually been hanging out with him earlier at the Diana booth, and we were shooting the XR200 177. And then this guy, I was really glad he won because he actually bought, must have been at least 50, maybe 100 raffle tickets, and it totally paid off. He won the biggest prize there, which was a brand new big boy compressor. So... I was just so glad he won since uh, he definitely spent the most on raffle tickets. I actually got there a day late and I left a day early, but they have another dinner the next night where they have the award banquet basically for the field target competition. All right, everybody. Like I said before in this video, I encourage everyone to go to the Pyramid Air Cup. It's a ton of fun. That's it for me on this one. I hope to see you next year at the Pyramid Air Cup. I'll be there. But till next week, happy shooting. We'll see you on the next one.